Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mining Now. I'm your host, Jared Downey. Today on the show, we have Maxim Tires. Okay, Gowdy? Yes. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have Matt Johnson. He is the VP at Maxim uh, Tire Mining Group. We're going to be covering a lot of ground today on mm -hmm. the show. Um, before we do that, Gowdy, our sponsors. Absolutely. All righty. Well, we start off with Fuller Brothers. Fuller Brothers Inc. has over 59 years of tire industry experience as the world's leader in providing non-hazardous, non-toxic products that reduce tire management costs for a diverse range of customers. The acknowledged formula developers of the globally recognized tire life. Fuller Brothers also produces other quality products such as PSF Plus, PSF, Lubes It, Tire Cream, Dripless Tire Paint, Omega Tire Repair System, as well as select tire service tools and tire painting equipment. For more information, you can visit them at fullerbros.com. We have the, insert, the inside covered. Next up, of course, we've got CIM, the 2022 edition of the Maintenance, Engineering, and Reliability Mine Operators Conference, or MIMO, is coming to Sudbury and the world in February in a hybrid, uh, hybrid format. That means all of the conference programming, including networking events and the trade show, will be available to attendees in the host city of Sudbury. And the program will also be online, so virtual attendees will have access to all technical presentations and keynotes. So registration is now open, and you can find more details on MIMO and other upcoming CIM events all at CIM.org. Next up, we also have Savina Equipment. Savina Equipment supplies new and used mining equipment around the world from plaster to underground to ore processing plants. They have gold concentrating tables, trammels, and mineral jigs in stock now to take advantage of the high gold prices. You can visit them at SavinaEquipment.com where you will find more equipment every day. We also have Power Zone Equipment when you need a specialized team of world-class engineers for your oil and gas pipelines, dewatering, or any fluid handling needs, you want to visit PowerZone.com. In addition to their inventory of rebuilt pumps, motors, engines, they also have an amazing team to design and engineer your systems, no matter the challenge, no matter the location. Get in the zone with Power Zone. Visit them at PowerZone.com. And last but not least, we have Holly Frontier Lubricants and Specialties, which includes the Petrocanola Lubricants brand. Petrocanola Petro Lubricants products and services are proven to maximize equipment performance, productivity, and overall savings. From heavy-duty engine oils to hydraulic fluids, automatic transmission fluids, and gear oils and greases, Petro Canada Lubricants is committed to delivering innovative solutions that deliver value and keep businesses moving. They have dedicated technical expertise, knowledge, and know-how to help customers in the mining industry operate smoothly with improved equipment, reliability, and performance. You can learn, learn more at lubricants.petro-canada.com or contact them at 1-866-335-3369 to arrange a call with one of their technical experts. Thank you, Gowdy. I was thinking uh, Fuller Brothers might have, there might be a better match for them to advertise on, but probably not much. I know, right? <laughs> there you go. Um, and I think Mimo was where, it was Mimo where we started Mining Now, right? In Camel? Yes, yeah. that's actually true. Mining Now started in Mimo, so you definitely have to check them out and, and definitely attend, whether you can attend in Sudbury or just online. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be making it out there in person, but we will be online watching it. Yeah. Uh, we just, I just did a CIM event online. It was actually very good. I, I actually kind of like it because I can do stuff on the side while I'm <laughs> watching. Notes yeah. And, yeah. Matt, welcome to the show. Good to have you on. Uh, thank you very much, Jared. It's great to be on with you guys. It's a great uh, opportunity. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's lots of fun. We've, uh, you know, there was there was a time when people tried to convince us to do two or three minute little interviews, and we went, "No, we're going to get people on for an hour." So, <laughs> so yeah. well, good to have you. I don't know if I could uh, get what I have to say out in two or three minutes. So, well, that's <laughs> I appreciate what, the length. Yeah, though that's what we figured out. There's, you know, it's um, if you want to just say hey, we have good service and we have good products, that takes about thirty seconds. If you want to dig into why, it takes a little longer. So, um, yeah, definitely. Where, what is your where, where are you located? So I'm located in Reno, Nevada. Um, born and raised here my entire life. So, and what is your as the VP uh, in the mining segment? What is your is this a uh, like U.S. role, global? What what is your sort of position with the company? It's a it's a complete global role. Um, it's really 
up to me on our direction and our approach to each market and where, where we're going. Um, we also, I also have a lot of say so on what our R&D team and engineering departments are doing and how we're going to meet what the market, market desires are. So it is definitely a global role. Yeah, it's always it's always interesting to me. We've had, you know, we've done a few different, uh, well, like like you saw a sponsor, Polar Brothers. These, you know, these sort of different streams, all sort of, um, you know, with with tire being tires being that central focus. It's always amazing to me how much uh, how much goes in to servicing the tire segment of the mines because I I, I guess it's fair because <laughs> the whole mine is literally riding on these tires. What is um. Can you give us a little bit of the scope of, of just who Maxim Tires actually is as a company? Yeah, you know, it, it says it on a lot of our advertisements and our business card says the very same thing. We're a business solutions provider. So what Maxim Tire is really doing is we're, we're building an extremely high quality product at a, a cost point that makes it very feasible for our customers to run and save them money. Uh, and our directional approach to all this is to, is to become the number one player in the tire industry. So uh, right now, we're chasing that down in a high rate of speed. So we've been in the market for about seven years competitively. Um, and then over the last two or three years, we've taken over um, a large share of the market and, and growing rapidly. So that's kind of who we are. We have a wide array of products that support multiple industries uh, all around the specialty tire side of things though. I was reading a, a news release. I didn't get a chance to re- read it in detail, but there's actually, you actually have the Maxim Mining Group. Um, can you sort of outlay what that sort of, um, obviously the mandate of, of getting, you know, expanding in the market and things like that, but more from a, a service perspective, what, what is that, uh, what is that part of the company um, focused on? Yeah. So Mac Mining Group is, is really about servicing a mindset and how our vision is of doing that better. So we've gone around the globe um, and selected partners, uh, also known as dealers, uh, tire tire dealers in local regions that have localized warehousing and personnel on site and ground um, that can go to the sites uh, weekly or every two weeks to go out and help manage air programs and, and rent maintenance programs on the tires. Uh, and what Maxim is doing on that is providing a product that will perform and compete at the right price point and then giving the support to our partners and with our own field engineers backing that up in the field. So we're very interactive with our product. Um, we've actually gotten to the point where we've had customers ask us to not come as often to check our tires, which, you know, it was kind of a sad moment in time, but uh, that customer definitely knows that we're there to support and we're looking out for the best interest on, you know, the cost of mining. So when you look at tires as a whole, uh, cost of mining is, or tires and, and the running of tires is generally a top two cost at a mine site. Um, sometimes it's number one, but generally fuel will outweigh tires. But uh, if we could save a customer 10, 15 percent, then that's what our goal is. Our, our ultimate goal is to win that business by always driving the customer's cost of operating down. And, and we've been pretty successful at that so far. So you're doing it through a, a distribution model on one. Do you are you dealing also with like uh, like any of the OEMs and, and in that sector where you're selling direct to the suppliers? Is that part of the business as well? Uh, we definitely sell through the OEM segment of it. Um, it's it's a different size than what we do on our GOTR size, which is in our books, 2749 and up. But our OEM is a very important part of our business. Um, Caterpillar is a major partner with us. Uh, we've actually had multiple tires pass, pass their testing and they broke a machine trying to uh, get our tire to underperform. So uh, that's a very good partner for us. And, and that plays a, a big role in the mining world. Uh, if cats willing to put their stamp of approval on our product, uh, mine sites tend to pay attention to that. So uh, yeah. half, half our challenge is market recognition, right? So when people think of other tire manufacturers, manufacturers have been around for a hundred years, it's your dad's dad ran that, right? Maybe your grandpa pointed out how good that tire was to end with Mac. Right, yeah. Again, seven years into it, uh, we're, we're creating that. Uh, and it's happening fast. When I, when I first started, so originally before I came to Maxim, I was working for, for Cell Tire and um, Maxim came and wanted me to test their products and I was very hesitant. And over that, you know, five, five year period, we continually test because they're good partners. Maxim as a whole as a company is a very good partner to do business with. Uh, and they stand, they, they did then and they definitely do now. They stood behind what they said. So uh, from seven years ago to where we're at today, uh, I, I would say everybody's paying really close attention to what we're doing in the market. So it's a good position to be in. 
I don't, I don't think I consider myself an interviewer if, if I just let you, you breeze past uh, Caterpillar broke machine testing your tires. <laughs> I think I have to go back to that. Um, what, what goes into testing them? You know, I, you know, you hear it's, and this is why we do the show in the long form, you know, you hear, you hear something, you go, okay, they did that. But you know, on this show, we like to kind of dig in. How does um, a heavy duty manufacturer, how do they test uh, tires to get that stamp of approval? What's, what's the actually, what are they physically doing with the tire? Uh, to be honest with you, that entire test is, it's, out, it's outrageous is the best way to describe it. So they put that there, not only do they put our tires, but they also put their equipment way past the recommended operating conditions. And they do things um, like what they're testing is uh, they'll overload the bucket and use a, 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 a loader as a, a RTD, if you will, or a rubber tire dozer and, and see how the tire spins or slips and the traction within that. Or they'll go into a hard dig face and pile the bucket into the bottom and sit there and bounce it, bounce it around in a static load and try to get indexing of the tire on the wheel. So what, what that means is where the actual wheel spins inside the tire, which can create bead damage and air pressure loss and a whole bunch of different things. So when they were doing that, they were bouncing around so hard trying to get our indexing to happen on a brand new uh, tire we'd released them that the machine actually shut down. And it, it, I don't remember the exact parts that broke, but uh cat took it as a challenge and then the next day went back after it but uh they gave us the stamp of approval and on that specific tire um we were the best one on indexing and traction so it, it was very fun to be a part of that and it's fun to watch what they do it'd yeah. be something that you'd have to see in person but what they do with machines i've never seen in real life uh and most of those operators would say that they would have been fired in a second if they did that on the job site so I was going to say that's that's a, that's the dream job of everybody that's ever given equipment. That's like no no hold back, just give it to it. Yeah, except for the I mean, those, some of those guys in the the motors, and when you watch them, they look like they're riding a, like a, a bareback bronco, bronc or bull. Man, they're just yeah, can't I mean, be they're, that pleasant. Yeah, they're getting with it, but it, you know, it's a testament to what their machine is capable of too. Because yeah. I I had no idea some of, some of their machines could take that type of abuse and keep ticking, and that was one time. Out of all the tests they did, that was one time, um, and it wasn't a major break. It wasn't like, you know, a wheel and tire fell off. It was something probably with an overload switch, something type. Yeah, I was going to say, it was probably a computer that went, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like this, that's exactly what it was, but I'm taking it as a win for Maxim. That's what I'm oh, saying. Ab <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, and it, and it, but it, it is, like, like you say, even when I hear, you know, when we were planning out this interview, and then you see, oh, a company like Caterpillar is testing the products. I mean they they have every advantage to to say this is not a product that should be on the machine so when they test it, it it really does mean something beyond you know what you can say or what i can say about the company when, when a company like caterpillar gives it the stamp it it's it carries a lot of weight yeah we're actually you know and the exciting thing with cat is we're actually one of the first choice first front line they called on the tires now so uh that's a huge honor right so when a, a company like caterpillar that's been around in the mining industry and construction industry and all the other industries they're now involved with. Uh, when someone like that says you're a frontline tire with us uh, and they continue to test our sizing, we're going to stay being a part of that. We don't see that as anything but a positive for us. Absolutely. So, um, can you can you set up a little bit about, you know, obviously a lot of people watching the show will sort of uh, understand a little bit, but, but just, just to make sure that we cover it, um, can, you, can you unpack sort of the tire lines that we're talking about, you know, the off-road, the haul truck lines um, on your website, you have it really nice where you can go through, we'll put a link to that where you can actually go through all the tires and they have, you have the little icons of the machines that they're compatible with. Um, but can you just sort of walk through the product line setup? Yeah. So I'm going to start with the smallest. Uh, so we, we, we produce the world's smallest tire in an industrial lineup. Then we have solid and pneumatic tires in the industrial line. Uh, and then from there we move into uh, port tires, which actually has an extreme amount of similarity to both industrial and, and what you'd see in underground mining tires. We also have our solid tires, which is somewhat similar to what we do to as a solid industrial tire, but we have a solid tire for larger tires, such as loader tires and uh, a piece of equipment like that, where it has apertures inside the tire that allow for it to ride similar to a pneumatic tire. Uh, um, and it has a very specific mark that it's designed for and utilized for, but it's an important part of it. Uh, we have our agriculture line, which uh, we're radialized in the agriculture line. We have a VF technology in that line as well. And uh, over the last year and a half, they developed a complete line in that. Uh, and then we have what we call ROTR, radial OTR, which is 
more along the lines of construction and um, underground tires, your 25 inch products. And then you have uh, kind of where I belong, which is our GOTR, which is our haulage lineups, uh, 2749s all the way up to, which is, ex this is another ex exciting point is we now produce a 5980 or 63, which is the largest haulage tire in the world. It's the biggest tire you can buy. Uh, and Maxim Tire, seven years in the industry, producing it, it's running, and we're having no issues with it. So um, it's pretty exciting to see what we're capable of. And again, that's pretty much your specialty tire lineup. And oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about this, but forestry. Forestry is a ma another major tire for us. So um, that that tire has done exceptionally well in the market. Um, I, I don't. I th personally, I feel like we're already the industry leaders in that and growing. So it's pretty fun to watch that come along. So. Um, I, I mean, you're, you're going to have to bear with me on some layman questions here. Um, for, for one, how big is the biggest tire that you have? What, what's its what's its capacity? Uh, you know, weight. You know, just just the scale of it. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about the exact weight of the tire, uh, but I will tell you that the low carrying capacity that that piece of equipment goes on is 400 tons, right? So, and that doesn't include the equipment weight. So it doesn't um, include. It does not include the equipment okay. weight. So that's payload. So when you're looking at that, the, those six tires are carrying, you know, 750 tons, or you know, uh, so it's it's a big thing. But the tire itself is uh, 13 foot eight inches tall and about five foot nine inches wide so if that gives you an idea of scale and size yeah yeah i when i was a kid uh we used to play in a uh there was a, a hockey town that we'd go play against them um and they outside it was a it was definitely a mining town and in every way and <laughs> it, outside the rink they had the the giant uh, haul truck out there with the, one of these giant tires and i just remember every time as a kid i just walked by that thing and looked up it's crazy how large they are yeah it's funny because I grew up in a mining town too, as we talked during the interviews. And I, I remember the very first haul truck I ever really rode in was a triple seven, right? So wow. that was a 20, 2749. And the crazy thing about that is I can now, at my height, reach up and touch the top of a 2749. And the biggest tires now, I feel like I was my little kid. I basically see over the bottom bead of the wheel, right? Like, yeah, oh, it's nuts. It's okay. absolutely nuts. Did you, uh, yeah, go, going back to that a little bit, did you, um, Actually, no, I want to, I don't want to forget a question I had. So I, I'm going to get to that later. Um, another layman question I have on when you get into these large tires, um, and, and I'm sorry if this is a bit of a <laughs> silly question, no. but the, I was, I was looking, I was watching your videos and I'm seeing in the open pits and I'm thinking, well, the, like, where, where I grew up in, you know, British Columbia, and then you have places like Nevada and then, you know, down to Latin America and Africa, and you have all these, you know, clay and sand and all these different are they, when you have a, a, let's say the largest tire that you have, does that have different treads on it for these different landscapes that, that it's going to be on? Or is this sort of a universal thing, you know, mud and snow and all that sort of stuff. Is there a whole bunch of variables within that size of tire or is it a one size fits all when it gets to that scale? When it gets to that scale, it's pretty much a one size fits all. So we, we, we try to be very cognizant of a, a, a soft, wet type slick condition versus a dry hard rock mine that you'd see throughout nevada arizona or parts of australia um we, we take that all into consideration we we and when you come to that size of tire we try to design a tread comp or tread design that will uh complement each one of those while while i still have the characteristics to run in you know the most extreme side of things so and, and what i mean by extreme side is extremely soft underfoot where it's slick muddy clay yeah. water to it or if you're running down a you know a long haul road with hard pan to it. So if you look at our tires, we have uh, some open shoulders, but a very small center. So the open shoulders on the outside are for traction uh, through cornering or in slick type condition. And then the center that's more closed up and almost like a rib is designed for those long straightaway hauls. So you have a less rolling resistance. So that takes in consideration fuel consumption or fuel burn, burn while running our product. And then it also extends the life of the wear of the product. So uh, right now uh, it's typically one design in those unique sizes like that the 598063 and then does that stay all the way down though if you get into like you know the the off road and that then do you start switching based on where you're going to be or uh, or or is it pretty much the same down the line when it comes to the design of these heavy duty tires so the the big heavy duty tires are very set in stone what they do right so you don't find 400 ton haul trucks all over the world it, it's actually a minority that run that so yeah that's an easier size but when you take 
let's let's go all the way back to the old the other spectrum. So if we go all the way back to the triple seven, twenty seven hundred four nine or hundred seven class ultra, um, that for example, we have four different tread designs. So wow. we have our four hundred one, four hundred two, four hundred three, and the brand new four twelve. Uh, and because of that, that equipment is used in a, a much broader array of footprint. So originally, when the triple seven came out, it was the new biggest, baddest mining truck there was. And I I remember I drove it when I was seven years old. Really? on my dad's lap so i remember the day that truck came out it was pretty impressive but Good luck today, today. <laughs> yeah yeah it wouldn't happen today uh but today it's a it's very much a, it's a construction truck it's a loop truck it's a uh, water truck it's i mean it's a toy hauler it, it serves so many different purposes so as that market is diversified and sort of being utilized that product started getting utilized in much more a, a wider array of say application is the best thing we had to adapt to that where when you take a, like the 793 and the 797s, or, or you know, the, I always reference CAT. That's what I'm used to. But the Kamatsu's and the you know 300 ton, 250 ton, it's more of a set in stone type of market right. for that. Okay. So, no, that's no, and I, it's one of these simple questions that I've actually wondered, and I've just never had the right person to ask um, what that setup is. So that's helpful. Did what about the system of you know, and I know that life, you know, we've, we, we've had, you know, uh, tire distributes on talking about, you know, monitoring these tires and, you know, sort of the life of the tire. What is, what is your role from sort of, you know, the customer shows up or you show up and you start having that dialogue with the customer till the end of that tire's life? What is, what is Maxim's role in that is in a, a specifically in the mining side of things? Yeah, so we're cradle to the grave, right? So we manufacture the tire and we want to watch it until end of life. What that means is we're going to be there every step of the process, process with our, you know, either with our partner uh, dealer uh, or with our own engineers on site doing that stuff. But what we, we're looking at is we're looking at that air pressure program is the number one thing you have to be paying attention to. We're, we'll look for worn wheel parts or wheel conditions. We'll meet with your maintenance department and plant maintenance and planning departments and discuss rotation. Uh, a major, another major thing is to make sure that the mine's achieving front rotation programs within that site, uh, which is typical of third of life for 3,000 hours. A lot of sites go by hours. I prefer uh, third of life, meaning you're getting a third of that tread wear off before you put it to the rear of the tire. And that also creates bears for the rest of the fleet. Um, and we coach through that whole process. We'll talk about rotations. We'll pay attention to strut pressures on haul trucks to make sure the wear rates, the wear patterns within the tire are accurate. Um, and then the other thing we really like to do is meet with mine planning and, and figure out what the next steps in the mine sites are. Uh, we actually have a situation right now where one of our customers was mining in the hills, and now they're going from the hills to the valley floor. And the problem with that is their entire inventory was designed for uh, a different tire capability. And so now, since they're you know eight months ahead of telling us, we've been able to slowly start adjusting what tires we're putting in there, planning on their, their future as well. So uh, our goal and our our business partner goals is to be, uh, you know, immersed in your business to understand what you're trying to accomplish. So we feel like if we understand your goals and you're open to us about your goals, then we can help you achieve that. That's really kind of where we're going with it. So do you find, do you find that, uh, well, like this, you, you know, come out of the Hills and in, into the, into the bottom of a Valley or into the flats. It, when you have these types of situations, um, you know, I don't know the, the scale of the mine that you're talking about, you know, a lot of the big mines are going to have, you know, they've got a lot of layers of, of experts on there. But when you get into, you know, a, a mine of a couple hundred people or something like that, is there a lot of coaching that needs to happen? You know, when to rotate the tires and that sort of thing? Because you don't necessarily have an expert on on their staff that that understands all these things. Yeah, you know, so mining is unique in a way. So a lot of miners have had to pay a lot of attention to mining, mining tires. And as I said earlier in the show, it's the number one or number two biggest control expense, right? So uh, most mining companies always have someone or a mine manager that has a, a pretty good understanding. And the reason for that is um, over the years, manufacturers, dealers, um, uh, people like myself in my previous role would go out and have what we called 101 classes and tire awareness classes. And it's a major thing on safety. So most sides have a basic understanding of the importance of tires. And the biggest thing is the contained energy within that tire. Um, but when we actually sit down and go plan it out with mine, mining companies and, and what their direction is, um, I would say they're, they're pretty knowledgeable. It's more of just fine tuning their thought process on what they're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And 
and the new technologies are out. Like the biggest job for any of us is to ensure that they're testing and continuing to test and compete um, and not be set in your ways. Uh, realize there's other opportunities out there, tread designs that may work, compounds go in that direction. So, well, I think we ought, with the caterpillar segment, I think we covered the, there's a there's a quality level that Maxim has. Um, so to lead into this question, when you does it make it easier when people are knowledgeable because they are able to identify? Are they able to identify the quality faster than if, let's say you're coming and selling to me? I don't know one tire from the other, so I, I, it's actually much harder for me to make the decision. Is it an advantage if you show up on site and you've got these people that really understand? Yeah, it's definitely an advantage. And it, when the, the more intelligent, or not, and that's the wrong word, but the more <laughs> aware people are of what the product can do or has done, or the more examples or like test case studies we can bring to them and show them, uh, it's great. But when you look at a tire on the outside, most tire, most tires look good, right? It's a, it's a molded piece of rubber, basically. For most people, they don't understand all the, the intricate parts of that. Um, the biggest challenge with the mining industry is when you look at the average haul truck tire getting anywhere from, you know, 5,000 to 11,000 hours or 50 to 60,000 miles on it, it's a year. So most mine sites when Maxim walks in the door is we go in there as a trial type basis. We don't use the word test. We've passed the testing phase. We, we passed testing in our factory when we put it in the, the market. So we're now onto the trial phase. Uh, it takes a year. So. Uh, and the great thing about doing it that way is at the end of the year, we typically get a much bigger order and we become a long-term business partner with them. So that's, that's kind of the way it goes on that stuff. The, um, on the manufacturing side, it's, it's, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, in 2022, I want to do more shows that really, you know, we, we tried to promote companies who are doing stuff like on site. And cause I really want to understand like some of these, how things are manufactured, you know, they do it for, you know, they do it for Skittles on TV, how stuff's made. Um, I think we should be doing more of it on the heavy industry side. Um, that manufacturing system, I mean, is that, you talk about price uh, being competitive on price, um, you know, and I, I realize you're sort of outward facing in the mining sector, but I'm just wondering how important is that, um, you know, making a good tire, but also how you make the good tire so that you stay competitive? I mean, that's, that's the core of us, right? So our technologies within our manufacturing plant are second to none. Uh, we actually own a tire manufacturing equipment company. Uh, and because of that relationship between uh, MyTac and Saloon, which is Saloon's our parent company, the Maxim, uh, we get the newest and most advanced technologies within our own plants. A lot of time is a, hey, we have to prove this machine up. And then when it's there, it's done and tested out, we get to keep it. Um, so some of our new CBMs are extremely capable. It's quite impressive from where, you know, what a tire building machine is CBM, where it came from, you know, two years ago to what they're capable of today. Uh, and when you look out through our whole building process and what our warehouses are capable of, um, it's, it's quite impressive. So if you take our St. Loon produces passion trigger tires and light truck tires, it's pretty impressive that raw material enters one side of the plant. And it gets loaded in a shipping container, uh, a train cart, uh, with very little, if no human interaction. So it's a completely computerized or automated system to produce, produce those tires. Now, giant OTR mining tires or ROTR tires, larger tires take a little bit more human interaction, but it is getting a lot more efficient about being more automated. And automation is uh, part of our key to success on that, to be able to reproduce a tire identical time after time after time so it's pretty exciting to see that you know uh one one of these days if you ever have uh one of your engineers or someone who designed that system please bring them on <laughs> because you know it's funny because i've had people again uh you know it's funny when you're building a show and sort of people have a concept of what it should be you know some of to, to this day some of our most popular episodes are are engineers and it's not because they're these amazing speakers or anything like that it's because it's beyond what sort of people can imagine putting together what these engineers do and these automation systems. You know, we've, we've done a lot of automation on the processing side, yeah. automation on the manufacturing side, especially on the industrial and heavy, that heavy stuff. It's crazy what, what it takes. It, 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 it's very impressive. I, you know, I, I, I've been fortunate in my time that I, I've gone to a lot of different tire manufacturing facilities. Uh, and over the years, uh, 20, 26 years in the industry. So I've got to see some of that stuff. Um, and I can tell you right now, uh, 
when you go to our manufacturing facilities, you could gladly sit down on the floor and eat there and not worry about anything. And then when you look at the the equipment and how it's raised and the or, or arranged and the organization of that and the flow of the factory, it's extremely impressive, right? So yeah. uh, my first trip back to our plant uh, there in Jingdao, China was uh, two years ago uh, before challenges of the world took place. Yeah. We weren't allowed to travel. <laughs> That's a good so, way of putting it, challenges of the world. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I remember I walked around and was kind of in awe. I was like, okay. Like it was, you know, when I, when I came to work for the company, I, I came to work for Mac and largely in part because of people that they already had in place. Uh, and I believed in the direction of that. Like uh, my boss, Troy Klein, uh, uh, Jimmy McDonald, those guys had a very good vision and direction. And to be honest with you, I lined up perfectly. But uh, some of the things that kind of drove it the rest of the way home is when I went to our, our plant in China and saw the manufacturing process and the professionalism at that level, I was like, wow, it was impressive. Very impressive. So, yeah, well, it's yeah. And if you, there is, is ever an invitation for Crownsman to do a, an interview on that floor, we, we will be there. I promise that. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll I, talk about through, it. I've been throwing out a lot of, I've been inviting myself to a lot of stuff, waiting for someone to bite. So uh, I'll throw it out yeah. the, um, I, mean, I like how um, you brought up how it's made. That's one of my favorite TV shows. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, you know, and I, and I, it, it is, it really, for 2022, we really, you know, we don't have these multi million dollar production budgets they have and everything, but we really do want to work with people to, to show, you know, pull back that curtain of how stuff is being made. And I, it also goes to a further belief that I have is that, um, and I've talked about this a lot on the show, with, specifically with mining, you know, getting, you know, support public support and that is you got to educate people. You got to tell them what's happening. And if you tell them and they start to understand, it's much easier to get the support rather than saying, well, we do a good job and it looks good. And it's a good product. And uh, here you go. Buy it. Yeah. You know, and that doesn't matter if it's an operating mine or a product for the market or whatever you're doing. I, I really, especially in today's world, you know, our, we see from doing this show that people want information. They want good information and, and they really, it builds trust very fast doing it that way. Yeah, I, well, knowledge is key to anybody's success and understanding, right? So some of the most dangerous people in the world don't have a clue what they're talking about, right? Yeah, exactly. Especially uh, on mine. <laughs> yeah, and the crazy thing is I've traveled the world doing this stuff, and I've sat with next to people on airplanes that, you know, they, they're not pro-mining or pro-any of that stuff. And I like to point out that without mining, we don't exist. Today's industry, there isn't a single industry out there that doesn't exist. And the problem is, is they remember the mining of yesteryear, right? And what I mean by that is mining, you know, of the 1950s and 60s, uh, and agriculture was different in the 50s and 60s. Every industry was different. So forestry, everything yeah. was different. And now you look at what they're capable of doing on mine sites. They're, they're worried about oil being spilled on the ground. They're contamination. They have pads under every single pickup truck. They're, they're cognizant of being green. Uh, they're driving manufacturers like us to produce a better tire, to be more efficient at Re repurposing that tire so we have companies now cutting tires in half and creating giant water tanks that you know and everybody's like well it's just a junk tire late in the field but it's a water tank that's going to last a thousand years versus a, a metal one that could rust away in 10 or 15 years yeah. um you can't shoot a hole in a uh, rubber wire t water tank not especially a hulch tire there isn't a unless you have a 50 cal rifle you're not going to punch a hole through some of that stuff so you know without within the mining industry and what we've done within the tire industry from tdf tire dry fuels to repurposing tires to water tanks to um, uh, you know like cow tire has a process in South America where they're they're actually breaking the tire down they're taking the carbon black the, the steel yeah, and the, yeah with them on yeah. the show in Chile yeah we uh, we had them on the show and they unpacked the whole system and showed video yeah. but it was amazing yeah so you look at what it's doing and, but within that industry we're we're driving ourselves to be better right we want to be the best there is and and that's an industry as a whole. So it's fun industry to be a part of. And I just kind of get on that green kick for a little bit. Sorry about yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's it. No, we, and that's, that's why we do it again. Lots yeah. of long form is so we can unpack these things. And, you know, going back to you, you said when you were, you were uh, a kid, you're driving a haul truck at seven years old. Did that, um, uh, <laughs> did you ever think about getting out of the, the industry or, or yeah. is it just, yeah. you loved it and you always wanted to be a part of it? You know, I, I didn't always love it. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Oh, no, that's a good thing. Yeah. So I actually always loved mining, right? But as a young kid, my dad was very 
you know, my dad's name is Britt Johnson and he's a very driven man, let's put it that way. And so his boys, uh, my, my older brother and myself, uh, had some pretty high expectations installed on us. And um, so at a young age, um, he expected a lot of us. But the, the awesome part about that is it was in a time in mining and it was a smaller mine site where we got a, you know, I sat on his lap and I drove my first haul truck. I found my first gold nugget with them in Alaska, um, mining at a small family operation up there. And then, you know, throughout the years, we've had experiences on sites that most kids and most people will never had that experience. And what that did is it, ex- it definitely exposed me to some, some people and allowed me to start building relationships and friendships with people in the industry at a young age. Uh, and so I'd say that uh, I, I owe a lot of it to him and his, him and exposing us to this and in the mining segment, which I always loved. The, the part I didn't like, to be honest with you, was the tire segment. And that was largely in part because at the ripe age of 13, I got told I had to work every summer while my friends got to play <laughs> in the tire shop. And so uh, it took me a little bit to understand tires and the importance of it. Um, but that was the, another unique experience. People ask me, you know, I get asked often where where I came from or how, how it is I'm, I'm at today. And the truth of it is, is I've, I've, my biggest deal is I, I've, I've been, the opportunity to learn from some of the, the smartest people in the industry for a very long period of time. Uh, and I formed friendships and, and bonds with them at a young age that kind of helped me throughout my life and gave me a head start uh, to where I'm at today. And then obviously I love the mechanical side of a tire. And that's where most people miss in the tire industry is that, that a tire is very much a mechanical object and they just don't realize it. So that's, that's kind of how we're, where we're at. So. Yeah. It's um, you know, do you, you know, and I, I won't, I won't get too, too personal on you. Um, but do you, do you still carry though some of that? You know, like I, I come to a little bit different. I come from the mining equipment world. Um, yeah. So I was out there with a wire brush cleaning it off, and you know the same, same sort of thing. You know, you know, a driven father and, and that sort of thing. But it's sort of this is my theory on it. It's sort of even though they don't get it perfect, and I. I my father certainly wouldn't say that he did and your, yours wouldn't, but they were, they were doing something. They were, they were trying and, and they sort of raised that bar. So even as you go into your, your career, you know, there's this work ethic that you need to bring or that you can bring. Cause you've, you've, you've seen someone yeah. else do it. Do you sort of, do you still find that there is a, a driving force behind you because of, of being around that environment of that work ethic? Yeah. I mean, my, yeah. It's just, it's ingrained in us, right? It's something I'm instilling in my kids. Uh, you know, if, put your nose to the grindstone and learn as much as you can, uh, retain the knowledge and pay attention in life. And I always tell my kids to be a leech, right? Like when you meet someone extremely intelligent and, and passionate about something you're interested in, learn from them, pay attention yeah. to them, befriend them, uh, and, and they can help you get to where you're at. So I, yeah, you know, when I was younger, when I was 13 or 14 years old, like any kid, I just wanted to go out and goof off, but nowadays like i'm thankful i'm very thankful for all the people that have impacted my life and i can it take me a day and a half to to lift those people out but I, i've been very fortunate from mine managers to mining engineers to maintenance managers guys that I, I worked with for 15 years on different positions and and off the wash them move up through those careers but we continued that bond of relationship being able to openly talk to one another and and do that stuff so i, I am very thankful for that that experience in my life is but it, it's the catalyst to where I am today. Let's so, put it that way. So your kids at 13 won't be uh, just goofing off all summer either. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it's harder now, right? So my kids are actually past 13. Uh, it's not as easy for them to get a job. It, it's, yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't be like, hey, go work in this tire shop. The tire shop is like, no. no, we're not allowing that. <laughs> no, well, I'm gonna, like you know, I laugh and I say this, and I, I, you know, there's a statute of limitations down here because I think we would get in trouble for this. But I was 13 and my brother was 15, and we had to drive 112 miles a day. Yeah, the legal driving age is 16 in the state of Nevada. So <laughs> <laughs> let's just say I drove one way and my brother drove the other way. So uh, you know, we did that our entire life. We drove from uh, a little town called Round Mountain, Nevada, to Tonopah, Nevada, and we worked at my family business, which was the Indy Tire. Yeah. Still very proud of that name because that name. That name in the industry changed a lot about it and how they track tires and, and the type of training we gave and, and really where we're at today. That that, that company was a, a front runner and really led by my father. So. Yeah, no, it's, no, and I appreciate when people are willing to get a little personal on the show because it, it, it does add a layer of what of who the people are behind the industry. And, and I want to kind of pivot it back over to 
to Maxim because, um, you know, this really struck me a few years ago that you spend a lot of cases, you spend more time with, with your colleagues sometimes than you do with your own family. Um, and it, you know, you, what do you see? I mean, you made a shift, um, to working with Maxim. Yeah. What do you see as a, as the culture of the company and, and also, um, and just sort of what gives them the edge, you know, besides, you know, besides product and price. And, you know, what do you see as when you walk into a room, you know, you have the edge because of a certain company culture that's behind you? Yeah, so it's really our people. But the big the biggest thing within our company and culture is uh, we're very open minded. We, we listen to everybody. We, we force everybody to give input. We give ownership. We drive people to be involved. We are continuously bringing them in to be involved. And it's not a, a tower type decision where the, the decisions came from one point down. We, when you, if you were able to be a fly on the wall in one of our uh, sales team meetings or managers meetings, uh, it's a group decision. It's very much, you know, 20 heads is better than one head uh, type action. Uh, and, and then when you look at the tech people we, that, you know, Troy Klein and uh, Jimmy and, and other people in our company brought to the table. And, and then not only that, but the, the type of people that are our other team members recommended it, it's leaders in the industry and i want to clarify that the leader in the industry that fits our bill the best right so when we when we look at hiring or bringing a team member to maximum we're looking at capability and knowledge in the industry and then how do you fit our team right like if you see team maxim anywhere uh we're we're dancing together we're having fun together we're all sitting at the same table you don't have a a, a piece of our team over here or a piece of our team over there you know, we're kind of like that unique team of assassins that <laughs> get along really well, and we're we're going out to take what's ours in the marketplace. So it's fun to be a part of it. I, it's hard to describe it, but they're my, you know, my teammates are my brothers, right? Like I get along with them that well. I, we we talk to, sorry, we talk to mo- multiple people throughout the day that not even necessarily in the day to day mining business, but uh, they just have a good head on their shoulders, and and they have to have. Uh, different customer approaches than we do, but it, it's, it's, it's unique to be a part of this. I've seen companies in the past that, you know, they're very segmented and they all have yeah. their own little silos. Uh, and Maxim, it's, it's all of us, right? Yeah. Like when you come on in Maxim, we call it uh, the, the brainwashing or drinking from a fire hose. But your first week in our company, you, you have to spend time with Troy, our, our president, uh, Matt Pagan, who is a, one of our engineers that's based in there. He's a great, extremely intelligent engineer, um, and Troy being an engineer by trade as well, uh, they sit you down and they cover every single product line, how it's manufactured and what it is. And and basically they're going to, you know, if, if you like any tire, you're going to look like all the technology in tire because even the littlest tire can have impact of understanding the biggest tire. Right. So it's a brainwash and we spend a week and then at the end of that, the last few days of that, you actually go to you come out to guys like myself and you spend an hour with me on the phone talking about tires or an hour with uh, our guys in charge of ag and forestry. And so they go through all that, but it's fun. It, you know, like I, it's, I, it's hard to describe but what our team is like. I would say we're laughing and joking while doing business 99% of the time. It's yeah. a fun team to be a part of. Yeah. And you know, and I, and part of the reason I asked that is because uh, Maxim is doing an egg show with us on Crownsman egg, unpacking that side of it. Um, you know, and talking to members from your team and the booking process, there's some companies and I've said it about other, you know, I'm not just saying about Maxim, I've said it. Um, and I'm not knocking companies. I haven't said it about, but uh, you know, I've run into companies doing this show that just, they, there's something, there's something about them, you know, and every company sort of has their thing. Like, like I've been on a panel with Caterpillar. I mean, they are planning. <laughs> they <laughs> plan everything. And they just, it's part of their culture. And it's obviously very effective and needed for what they're doing in the market. Um, but your, but Maxim, I just found they wanted to share. They wanted to talk. Everybody wants to, you know, they want to plan things out, but it's not, you know, it's not this brittle conversation. It's, you know, it, it, they're trying to get out in the market and, and re- have real conversation. That, that's special for a company that's, you know, in a very competitive market where it would be easy to kind of close up and say, this is why we're the best. This is what we do. And that's good enough. No, we're, we're very adaptive. <laughs> we're very like, that's part of our success is we make decisions fast and move, move right along. Right. So, uh, and it, as you said, in a very extremely competitive market with established people, you got to have an edge. 
And oh. so our, our, our edge is very much our people and then our partners that we've selected mm -hmm. throughout the globe to support our product and help drive home what we're trying to do, which is the, the best partner for our mining customers and other industry members. Um, before I wrap up, I just wanted to ask one uh, one question uh, just about the, the process, about when you go on to, at what point do you get involved? Like if a mine is in... Um, is in operation, they've got an existing fleet or they're, they're buying a fleet. Are you part of that process? Where do you, in, a, in an operating mine, you know, the pit's already there. When do you step in and what is that process, process like? Is it, you know, is, is this like an in-depth analysis or do you get a list of their trucks and then you send them the list of what they need? What, what's sort of that process, that initial one? So the very first thing we do is we vet the site. So what I mean by that is uh, we'll obviously contact the mine site and tell them we'd like to come out and talk to them about our product and capabilities. But before we talk about how many piece of equipment you have or what's your volume of purchase price of tires, that, that's really not important to us. Uh, the very first thing we want to do is we want to go out in the field and put boots on the ground and, and actually do GPS studies and weigh in the corners and the site conditions and then look at the their tire maintenance programs or the air pressure maintenance programs and look at all that. And then once we have all that data, we'll, we, we shake hands and say, it's great, thank you for allowing us to come out. Uh, we're gonna go and analyze our data and we'll come back to you. But the biggest thing we're doing at Maxim is making sure that our product will fit your demand. So when, when I walk back onto your site and put my money where my mouth is and I guarantee that I'm gonna save you a cost per hour or I'll guarantee a certain number of hours, which is ultimately driving your cost per hour down. Mm -hmm. um, I'm 95% sure that my product's going to be successful. So we don't want it to fail. So, and I, we've done this once, only once in the last two years that I've been part of. I know uh, Tim Good, who's a, a leader within our group, has had to do it a couple times, but we just didn't have a product for the right fitment for that, that site. So instead of putting a product in a situation where it wouldn't have given us the right reputation or proven that we were doing the right tire, we, we just called out of it and told the mind that we'll come back to them when we have the right product. So realistically, we're not just a sales force, right? Like we're going out and the very first thing we do is we, we do a study on our site. We do a GPS study. We do a TKPH study to make sure our products fit your demands. And then we look at the type of material and, and the practices around that equipment. And if we feel confident, our goal is to walk into you and say, we're here to save you money. We're here to lower your cost per hour of operation. Uh, once we do that, our guarantee is, is a warranty, right? And so it's not a warranty you have to buy any more Maxim product. Uh, it's, a, it's a matter that um, we issue a credit and it can go through our partner dealer uh, or if it has to be and we have to give you a cash check for our product working, not working, then we will. Uh, to date, I've only had one of those situations occur and we kind of knew it was going to happen. It was on our first generation 63. Uh, the tire did amazing. Uh, it did a great job, but we put a lighter compound in than the mine site needed uh, pur purposely to test our casing. So, um, and of all the other tires we placed, we haven't had that situation so far. So yeah. that's what we do. Well, I don't think you can really ask much more than that from your tire supplier. Um, thanks for coming on the show. It's, you know, it's uh, the tires um, and these types of things are one of those one of those topics where I just I hope because if you're listening to the show, you might go, oh, the first 30 seconds. OK, we're going to talk about tires. What's there to talk about? And I always hope people will stick in for that, that first couple minutes while we lay, the, lay out the interview because there is so much to cover. So thanks for coming on the show, Matt. I, you know, I, I'm excited to have Maxim is coming on, like I said, our egg show. Um, so we're going to be doing even more unpacking. So great to have you on and uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon. Thank you very much, Jared. It was great. I appreciate it. Okay. Gowdy, did you get to dri drive a haul truck when you were seven? <laughs> no. I never even I got like to I stand on out. one, let alone drive one. Are you kidding me? I'm missing out. I did not have that kind of childhood. I was literally, when I was a kid, it was like, yeah, I was just, I was just cleaning up. Um, <laughs> um, Gowdy, where can people go to like, follow, share, subscribe, um, comment, make nice suggestions? Don't be too mean. How about Jared? There's, there's enough meanness out there. You Invite don't Jared because he is, he really wants to be invited. To... <laughs> come on every show <laughs> um no definitely go to our youtube channel so you can subscribe and not miss a single episode of uh mining now crownsman energy the crownsman show crownsman egg um and follow us facebook linkedin 
Uh, and contact us if you want to be on one of the shows, because you are definitely invited on our to, onto our show. Well, depending on what you sell. <laughs> contact <laughs> Wait <us>. a second. <laughs> contact us, info at crownsman.com. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Gaddy. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We love, we love doing the show. Um, and uh, we will be uh, bringing you plenty, plenty more. See you on the next episode.